Hello everyone, my name is Lucas and welcome to a new episode in Unity 5 database with MySQL, PHP and c -sharp. Today we're going to get the information we prepared from last lesson and put it back into Unity in the form of arrays of strings. But before we can do that, we need to reformat these strings that we have here uh, because uh, you will see why. So first of all, let's open our itemsdata.php that we have from last lesson. And here in the echo, we want to change this a bit. The first thing we want to do is delete this uh, break. We don't want to skip each line, it's not necessary anymore. And also we want to delete all the blank spaces. We had like after name and to make it look better. Now we don't want to make it look better, now we want it to work properly. So we're just going to delete all those spaces. And finally, we are going to add our separators. And you will see now what we are going to do this. But for now, just follow me. And this is what we're going to do. At the end, where we used to have uh, the, bre the, the break, we're going to add a semicolon. And this is to separate, separate each item. So from here to here, all this is one item, right? The information about one item. And each value of information, so the ID, the name, we will separate them with this, a vertical stroke or what we used to um, what we used to say or in the if statements in our code so just type it over there over here and over here so this this character will help us separate this value here this value here etc so we save this and we can try running it again and you will see now it's formatted differently we have ID and then we have this and then we have the name health potion and then we have this type etc and then we have here we have our second item starts here and finish on the semicolon here this will be useful when we start doing our script so I made a new project and I made a new script called data loader or data loader and I attached it to the main camera so we can use the start function to run our script. So first of all, I'm going to delete the update. We're not going to need it. We want to get our data from our server. To do this, we need to use the www class. And what it does, it let us take information from a website. So I'm just going to call here items data and I'm going to make it a new www like this and the parameter is the URL that we want to get the information from so we just copy this path over here and paste it right there next we are going to take the information from this and we're going to store it into a string. So I'm just going to say items data string. This is a string type and it's equals to items data dot text. So from this web request, we, ha we can take uh, many information. We can take the text, we can take the any pictures that we have on our site, our page. We can also get audio clips. So if you upload some files to your server or your website, you can actually get them through this method. But for now, we just want a text because we're creating a string. And next, we're going to print that string out. So items data string. But we're going to get an error that you're going to see right now when we play it. You see, the error says that www is not ready downloading yet so this needs some time to download and 
we're trying to access it before we finish downloading it. So what we need to do is make our start function uh, I enumerator function. So we type I enumerator and replace the void word from it. If you want to know more about I enumerators, please click on this link somewhere around the screen. I'm going to update it soon to take a deep look about what I enumerators can do and some examples. But for now, just follow along. And very simply, this is a function that let us tell the computer to wait for a few seconds or wait for something and then go on to the next step. And to do that, we type yield and then return. And here we type what we want to wait for. So if I type wait for seconds, and here it must have a new, uh, if we type that, we can wait for the amount of seconds we want to wait. But now we're going to wait for items data. We're just going to yield return items data because we want to wait until items data is done downloading. Once it's done downloading, we're going to go on to the next step. So now we can try it again. And you will see we have the same that we have printed before in the website here. We have this string right here. Now we want to split the string because we have three items in this string and we want to separate. So I'm going to make a public a string array so you can see it on the editor. I'm going to type public string and I'm going to call this items simply as that and here we're going to type items equals to items data string dot split and what split does is just create an array from a string by separate separating it uh, in the character that we point out here so I'm saying split on each semicolon so if I play this now you can actually see here in the data loader script we have three strings so now we have separate strings for each of our items and I created a function that will allow us will allow us to take specific data from a string that we provide to the function so I just came up with this function a few minutes ago uh, while preparing for this video so we're just going to call this get data value okay and we're going to get two parameters the first one is a string that we're going to call data and that data is the item string this here where like the whole string that makes an item. And the second thing we want is another string and it's called the index. And the index is, for example, if we want name, we will type name here. If we want the cost, we're going to type cost here. So now try to follow along with me, but if you get a bit lost, I can make another video explaining more in detail about string functions and substrings and formatting and all those complicated stuff. It's not that complicated actually. I'm going to make a new string and I'm going to call it value. Oh, and sorry, here's not void, but here is a string because we want to return a string when we finish this function. So I'm going to make a string called value and I'm going to make it a data substring so what is a substring is just a piece of the string that we are pointing here so we just want a piece of the data and what piece do we want so here we want to select where we start and where we start is at data dot index of index here and plus index dot length. I will explain you why in a while, but for now just follow with me. Now we want to return value. So just to show you, I'm going to print get data value of items 
items. Zero. This is a string, remember. And the second parameter, we have two parameters. The second parameter is maybe the name. And I'm going I'm adding this because remember we have that in our formatting. If we try this, we get health potion. So we've got everything from name, after name, we've got everything. And now I'm going to explain you why I did this index.length and I have to edit. Here we actually we have to type in a number and that number is where we start to make the substring so if I just type data dot index of index so where we find this we find name we're going to get the index of this the end because here is where our string starts so we want to I'm going to show you what happened if I don't add the length of the index. If I don't add the length of the index, I'm going to get the name as well here, name. So that's why I have to increase that index by its own length. So the substring will start from after the colon here. So it will start from here onwards. So that's why we add the index dot length. But now you see we have also the type and the cost because it came in front of it it came after that so now we need to do another function the function is very easy to understand we're going to type that value is equals to itself but removing something so we're going to type like this value dot remove value dot index off and here we're going to provide our parameter which is this we want to find this and once we find this we're going to remove everything after that including it so let's have a try and now we have it health potion so now we have different items strings and we can provide a parameter to get and a specific information from that data. So if I change this to, for example, type, I should get the type consumables, right? So if I change it again, and sorry, if I change it again, and maybe cost, we will have a small problem. And that is because after cost, after cost, we have no separator, so we're going to check with a if if value dot contains. So if our value contains this character, we're going to replace it. Otherwise, we know we're at the end. We don't have to separate it, or we just one value in this particular data. So we don't need to remove anything. So let's try it one more time and we should get the cost right there there you go my friends so i hope it's clear thank you very much for joining me if you have any questions remember to leave it in the comments below I'll, i will try my best to solve your questions and if you have any friends that you think could be interested in learning video game development please send them my videos share it to them on facebook twitter whatever you want and please remember to hit that subscribe button and that like button it will really help me a lot next time we're going to talk about more topics if you want to suggest any tutorial please leave it in the comments as well so thank you very much again and i will see you next time goodbye